from the Dream Factory in Hollywood, here's the star of our show, Jim Gibson. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. And welcome to the show. You know, we all have hopes and dreams. And each week we get thousands of letters and email from people hoping to make a dream come true for a special person who's touched their lives. Well, we've invited three viewers who wrote to us to bring that special person to Hollywood. They've already enjoyed an exciting day on the town, including a famous Beverly Hills makeover. And now they're ready to tell us their compelling stories. But first, since our audience is such an important part of our show, I'd like for them to introduce to you their leader. Who am I talking about? Wow, they like you. Yeah, I like them too. You see, we met before the show when I explained to them oh. that it's their job to decide whose special dream will come true. All right, Artist Ali, well, let's get started and let's bring out our first guest. You got it. Now we're going to meet a man who is nominating his twin sister. He says that in his eyes, she's a guardian angel. Please say hello to Larry Dickens. Larry? Hey, uh, how are you? Pretty good. Here. I'm taller than I am. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Larry. Thank you. Uh, nice to have you with us. You are, you're from where, Larry? I'm um, from Northern California originally. I live in West Covina now. Okay. And uh, presently doing what for a living? I'm a life insurance salesman. And actually you're here. Uh, there were four kids in your family. Yeah. One of them, uh, all special, but you have a twin. Yeah. A twin sister. Yeah, fraternal. Fraternal twin. Uh, if it's a sister, I assume that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to bring her out in just a moment, but you wrote a letter that yeah. uh, speaks about her. And so why don't we read that letter at this time and then we'll bring your sister out. My sister Lois and I, along with our little brother and sister, were abandoned by our mother and left to deal with our alcoholic father and the problems of growing up. We had no money and nowhere to turn, but Lois said, we're a family and we'll stay together. I'll see to that. And she did. Now I want her to have her dreams come true. Ladies and gentlemen, Lois Dickens. Does she look great with that Hollywood makeover? <laughs> You know, the Hollywood makeover is one of the fun parts of our show. Yeah. She looks fabulous, doesn't she? Well, she always looks great, but I mean, she, <laughs> looks, she looks like a model to me. You could do that, probably, you know. Thank you. Nice to have you with us, Lois. Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, four kids growing up. Two younger? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, our little brother was 10, and our little sister was 12 when we were left on our own. And you were how old at that time? 17. So it was a tough time. How yeah. were you specifically left on your own, Larry? Um, we just came home from school one day. And we always knew that there was a lot of problems with mom and dad because dad drank a lot. And mm. I guess mom just decided that she couldn't take it anymore. So we came home and everything was gone. She just left. He just, she just left. And dad had his own problems. Four young kids, 17 and yeah. younger. Lois, you were in the middle of this. Mm -hmm. He was still around, but he came and went as he pleased. Yeah, yeah. Big responsibilities, which so somebody obviously had to kind of step up and help. And Lois, in, in this particular situation, it was you. The twin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how did that happen? What did you do? What, what had to be done? Well, our only choice was to um, <clears throat> get financial aid, welfare, and um, we were afraid to go to them because we were afraid the family would separate. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want that to happen, so. Mm -hmm. So what happened? I mean, what, what did you do? How did you keep the family together, Lois? Um, halfway through my senior year, <clears throat> we were 17, and um, when it all happened, we decided that I should quit school and get a full-time job. Now, that's a big deal. I remember my senior As year of high school. It's one of my favorite years of my life. And you'd let that go. No prom, no, no homecoming, whatever, work. Yeah. And so what did you do? I was flipping burgers at a fast food place. And um, I was also taking a program at school. You can go and train. And I told them that I, was go I wanted to take the GED test and graduate early. And um, I told them they asked no questions and they thought you were they thought yeah. that i graduated and they gave me extra hours and hired me on i see part time so other I jobs also mm -hmm. i kept my fast food job full time and then i worked at the hospital part time okay okay and and this did work it, it kept it together how did it keep it together larry, um, larry what I happened how did it go forward well it just went forward because of lois i mean she there was no way it couldn't go forward. She was so behind Financially, it. you were able yeah. to do it with Financially her. Financially and, and yeah. mentally, I think that's the most important thing is mm -hmm. that she connected with my brother and sister and I, and we all understood what we needed to do and that we were all in this together. And mm -hmm. that's what we you did. See, I think that's the importance mm -hmm. of family. And you've, uh, even under the worst of circumstances, have, have survived. 
congratulations to that. I know that Araceli has some questions in the audience. Let's listen to them. Uh, yeah, Lois, did, did the school or your neighbors or anyone else ever figure out what was going on? Um, no, they didn't. Um, what did your kids in class think? Because, I mean, they knew you. you were probably, if she was this pretty in high school, she was very popular, I'm sure. We kept it yeah. together pretty well. And um, so there was never any trouble with us that anybody ever questioned. Yeah. And, um, you know, our friends would ask us to do things a lot. And we always had something to do or some, somewhere else to go. And eventually they stopped asking us to go places and do things. And mm -hmm. Lois was really good but, about paying um, all the bills on time and being really responsible. And that still I, amazes me. I think it's surprising that nobody yeah. asks any questions yeah. if you, you know, do the things yeah. the right way. Yeah. Did you receive aid or assistance from any welfare? No, no. we didn't. Wow. No. We were afraid if yeah. we did, they would, they would find out and Split the family. break up the family. So. Well, I think you guys are very family. lucky to have each other. Jim. Thank you. Yeah. We do too. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to take a minute, Lois, um, in front of everybody, to tell you, thank you so much for giving up everything that you gave up so that we could have a life and we could go on and do something else. And you gave up everything that you had. And we really respect you and we love you so much and we just want to say thanks. I love you too. Mm. Very nice, I know. That's special. We are still in the dream business. And in addition to that thank you, which, which in itself was nice enough to close out the show, uh, what dream do you want to see have happen with Lois? Well, I feel that she gave me an opportunity to go to school, to college, and to establish myself, and she didn't get that. And I know she's really interested in computers, and would like to see her be able to go to like a computer school mm -hmm. where she could learn a trade mm -hmm. and learn to work with something she's interested in mm -hmm. and have the same chance at finding her dreams that she gave me. Good dream. Good dream, Lois. That's nice, Larry. <laughs> well, maybe today's the day. We'll find out later on in today's program. meet Mrs. Ella Carter, who is a head nurse at Cincinnati Hospital. Ella would like to nominate a very special hospital employee. Please welcome Ella Carter. Hi, Ella. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you, you Welcome too. to the show. Thank you. Thank you are you. a nurse? Yes, I am. From Cincinnati. From Cincinnati, yes. Midwest right. girl. Yes, sure am. Ever been to the West Coast before? Uh, this is my first visit. Do you like it? I'm having a great time. Isn't the weather better? It's just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's nice it to is. Have, nice to have you with us. I'm sure you have a zillion stories as a nurse. Yes. But one of those stories involves the letter that you wrote us yes. about a very special woman. Yes, it's about Gladys Carter, my uh, co-worker. Okay. Well, let's, let's hear about that. Sure. Read a little bit from your letter. Okay. I met Gladys when she was visiting her two small sons in a hospital where I'm a head pediatric nurse. She was on welfare at the time, but despite her own problems, she spent hours every day visiting with all the children in the ward. She impressed me so much, we offered her to join our welfare to work program, and she is now a dedicated hospital employee. Ladies and gentlemen, Gladys Cooper. Look at this makeover. Doesn't she look beautiful? You look beautiful. Well, you both look beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, they're going to love you more. I'm telling you, is Cincinnati ready for you, girl? <laughs> Hi. You look beautiful. Thank you so much. You're, I feel beautiful. You're, you're quite welcome. How long ago did this whole thing begin to happen? When you, when you uh, met each other at the hospital? About two years ago, I think it was. Yeah, she had the two boys in the hospital. She was there all the time. Two boys at the same time in a hospital? Uh, yes. Um, they have sickle cell anemia. Oh. And, and that's, it, so that was part of the reason why you had financial troubles, obviously. Oh, yes. But yet you, you, you visited? Yes, it was a comedy. She visited everyone, not just her <laughs> boys. All the children, they loved her, yeah. and she was so loving to them. Do you remember the first she's... moment you saw her when she walked into the hospital? Well, I saw she wasn't walking in. She was surrounded by all these children. She's like the Pied Piper. <laughs> she was surrounded by all these children, and they just, they just love her. She has such a good time. Well, that is a gift. It's a great report. That's, that, that is a gift, and, it, and you evidently have that. And you not only have it, but you're using it. And yes. that's nice. So you got her a job at the hospital. 
Yes, we have the Welfare to Work program, and she, her work, but she was there all the time anyway, so I was afraid we'd lose her if we didn't put her on the payroll. Okay. <laughs> and she's, she's done so well with it, and we're all very proud of her. So, Gladys, what do you do? I mean, here you are now. You have an opportunity to make a good living. Good for you. Yes. Off welfare, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and and what, what would your day consist of? Well, a lot of it has to do with going around and making sure that the children have what they need and that they're occupied and happy because a lot of them are in pain. And what is the biggest need for a child in a hospital? Lots of love. Lots of love. Lots of hugs, yeah. too. That's the best you part. You know, I think, that's, I think that's kids anywhere, <laughs> yeah, but maybe true. even more in a hospital because oh, they're away yes. from home. Yeah. A lot of young kids you work with? Yes, a lot of young children yeah. and babies also. Yeah. And they're just, oh, they're my heart. Now, do you stay friends when they leave the hospital? Do you correspond? Do they come to your home? Do you well, go to their home? You know what I get, Jim, those little letters, and I get to put them up on a bulletin board that I have, you know, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. birthdays and things like that. I've okay. set up a little bulletin board. Letters to you? Yes. Oh, so they do love you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so does Ellen. I love them. Well, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the neat thing about this, you know, because that's what I love about this show. I, I, Here's a lady that had two people, in the, two sons in the hospital, uh, on welfare, really struggling, uh, but yet giving, and it's worked out to here you are, and, and, and you're doing well. Yes. And that's a wonderful story. <laughs> we have some questions in the audience. First, I'd like to congratulate you, Ella, and also Gladys, and I'd like to know how your boys are doing today. Um, they're doing quite well. Um, every now and again, we go in the hospital just for a checkup because sometimes they're a little tired, but um, they're doing great, and they're involved in some sports, so it's really good. Gladys, there's so many people on welfare who can't lift themselves up. What advice do you have for them? Um, please let me say that never look at any of the things that are happening to you as something negative. They're always stepping stones and opportunities you know, to grow, and that's what this has been, a beautiful opportunity to grow. And I'm so happy for you. Ella, I know you wanted to share some, maybe share each to each other. You seem to be so close. Is there anything either one would like to say to the other? All right. I just want to say <laughs> something. Yes. I have to tell you that meeting you has definitely shown me the meaning of friendship. You've never oh. passed judgment. You've never put me down. And you've never, you've always been there for me. And I just want to say thank you for being a friend. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to And thank you for being a friend. Wow. We have a dream factory here. Yeah. Let's talk about that. All right. What is your dream, Ella? Well, my dream is actually for Gladys. This woman and her sons are the biggest Shamu fans ever. <laughs> <laughs> They're always talking about taking this trip to San Diego to go to SeaWorld. Oh, and I know this is something that would really make her and the boys really happy. So that would be my dream for her. Get away with the boys <laughs> and go see it. the yes. Shamu. Yes. I think that would be fun. Would you enjoy that? Oh, I, I would love that very much. I think you'd love it my as much as the boys. I love it so <laughs> very much. <laughs> it's a nice dream. And it's for a nice lady. And perhaps this is your dream day. We'll see. A little later on in the program. We'll see you a little bit later, as I said. And we will be right back with all of you. says that her husband has made the most dramatic changes in himself that she's ever seen in a human being. She feels that there's no better husband, father, or member in the community. From Temecula, California, please welcome Kim Kehoe. Kim? Good morning. Hi, Kim. Nice to have you with us. Nice to be here. Good to have you. Well, are you relaxed? Teme middle. First of all, Temecula, <laughs> am I saying that right? Yes. It's a, yes. It must be a very small town. I, I've not heard of that town. It, it is. It's, um, it's north of San Diego. Okay. And, and were you born and raised in that area? No, uh, around that area. Okay, in California Ontario. girl. Yeah. Okay. It's nice to have you with us. Been on television before? Never. Is it kind of what you thought it would be? Uh, yeah. yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can host the show. Here's the cards. <laughs> you know, we just want to chat a little bit because uh, all of our stories are, are really uh, intriguing and, and inspirational to all of us. Mm -hmm. and, you, and yours is the same. A uh, very special bond with your husband. Yes. And uh, you yes. sent us a letter. We'd like to have you read just a portion of that to us right now. Would okay. you please? Yes. 
I'm a little nervous. That's okay. You can be nervous. <clears throat> when my husband Chris and I met and fell in love, we were both headed down the wrong path. And I knew we needed to change. His past made it very hard. But somehow, he found courage to change things around. He is now a wonderful father of three kids. And even a counselor of hundreds of troubled youth on getting their lives back. Chris is my hero, and I love him. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Kehoe. Well, uh, nice to have you here. You look sharp. You Thank like that you. makeover? Does he dress like this every day? He always looks awesome. See, that's true love. <laughs> you look great no matter you got a t-shirt or, or a tie. Oh, there you go. Nice to have you with us, Chris. Uh, all of our stories, as I shared with Kim, are, are inspirational. Yours is as well. Uh, the times were, were tough at one time, but yet you've turned them around. Let's talk about the tough times first, though. Sure. Uh, things were not going right. You were going down the wrong path. It involved a, a lot of things, a lot, of, pro so. a lot of problems. Tell, tell me. Oh, it involved... Um, I got involved in gangs when I was real young. How old were you? Uh, probably 13, 14 years yeah. old. Yeah. Started running with gangs and got involved real heavy with drugs and dealing drugs and seems to go hand violence. In hand. Yeah. 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 And yeah. just uh, that that era of rebellion in my life. Mm -hmm. And it, it even got to the point where where you broke the law, had some problems, yes. spent some time in prison even. That's true. Yeah. And, I spent years. Uh, and that had a, years in prison. Yeah. Several years. Uh, actually, almost four. Three years, wow. uh, yeah. ten months. You were part of that time. You weren't able to really, obviously, be together. Right. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that, was that the lowest point? I would say prison was probably one of the lowest points, but even when I came home, um, the drugs and the alcohol and the partying stopped. I've, I've been sober almost eight years. Oh, that's great. Uh, so that's awesome. <laughs> but can you stay with him? Yes. Uh, what did you yeah. see? I mean, here's a guy that went off to prison, gangs, mm -hmm. drugs problems. Uh, did you see something behind w what he was at the time? I just saw something in his eyes. Yeah. And Always. he did. His so, eyes. Were so your instincts were correct. Yeah. Uh, and what were some of those things? You changed your life around. Uh, do you remember the day uh, that you changed it around? Yeah. Um, it's pretty touching. <laughs> it was a day that my wife prayed while I was taking my sister home. And she prayed that we would just stop living the way we were living and just get our lives right and lay a spiritual foundation in our lives, and she prayed hard. And it was funny, because I, I was driving home by myself, I felt that same, that same feeling, just like I needed to get right. So you could feel what, what, what she was praying about that. Oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I felt it so much, I came home and said, I need to talk to you. And she was crying, and she was, no, 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 I need to talk to you. I said, no, no, listen, we've got to stop what we're doing. We just got to get right and just. You, you owned a nightclub, you were, you were making money. A, a lot of things were going on, you yeah. stopped. I stopped it all. Stopped the bang. Wrote it all off, yeah. Maybe one day. One day. Wow. That's great. Uh, and not just stop what you were doing, but you started doing good things. Absolutely. Let's talk about that. Um, I started being the father that I've always dreamed of being. I started being the husband that I've always dreamed of being. And I... How many kids? Three. Three kids. They're, they're <laughs> awesome. babies. And they're proud, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good. Um, I started also working with youth and counseling youth, troubled youth that were in the same situations that I once was in. Mm -hmm. and, um, street kids? Oh, yeah, street kids. Yeah. Even kids that have good homes like I did, but strive for the opposite mm -hmm. and got involved Rebellion. in that stuff. Sure. You know, I'm sure our audience has lots of questions. Araceli? Kim, why didn't you leave this guy when his life was so intense? I love him. He's, he's awesome. I saw something in him that just wouldn't leave me. Do your kids and the kids that you counsel intermingle, and are there any problems with that? We all intermingle. Actually, I think my son has probably 50 big brothers. Yeah. I think my daughters have like 50 big sisters. Yeah. <laughs> what was the worst case that you ever dealt with? They all have their different measures. Um, I would say one of the scariest ones to deal with is when a kid calls you and says, it's it, it's over, I'm taking my life, which is also a cry for help, mm -hmm. saying I need to talk. And uh, lots of times we get up at AM hours, having a family, having a full-time job, driving there, comforting the kids, giving them hope, saying I've been there. I've had razors to my wrist. I know how it feels. You know, there's hope. Look at me now, you know. Thanks, Alison. You know, uh, these type of things don't happen every day, do they, Chris? No. And, and Kim, staying with you, uh, speaks very, very highly of her. But she has some things she wants to share with you uh, at this time. And, and Kim, what do you want to say? First of all, I want to tell you how much I love you. I love you with everything I have. 
and I, you deserve so much. And I want to thank you for um, giving up everything for me and the kids. And let's go one step um, further. Chris has a dream. And we, we are always so busy. Okay. And um, his dream is just to be with me on a, um, on a weekend or just to be alone. We don't get that because he gives so much. And um, I would like him to have his dream. Well, we hope that dream happens. Just being together, perhaps a special place, who knows? We can decide that for you. The audience can decide that for you. Perhaps this, today is that day for that dream. Regardless, you're a beautiful couple. I'm so proud of both of you for what you've come through. Thank you for being with us today. We'll see you a little later. We'll be right back. the moment that we've been waiting for. We've heard the stories and the dreams of our guests and audience. It's time for you to lock in your votes and make someone's dream come true. Will it be Larry getting his dream of sending his sister Lois to computer school? Or does Kim get that dream getaway for her husband Chris? Ella would like to get Gladys and her kids to San Diego to SeaWorld. I'll sell you the results, please. Thank you very much. Again, we've all been touched by these people and their stories, and I am very sure that it's a difficult choice for our audience, but they have made that decision. Congratulations goes to Lois. Your dream has come true. Lois, we've arranged for you to complete a two-year advanced study program from the acclaimed International School of Business. And Lois, we can't send you to school without your very own brand new computer, a Pentium 2 from IBM. How about that? School in the computer. Oh. Congratulations, Lois, and congratulations to all of our women. If there's someone you'd like to thank on TV, contact us at www.dreamfactory.com or call 1-800-4-DREAMS. On behalf of myself, Adeseli, and all of us here at the Dream Factory, remember, your dreams can come true. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.